everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I'm here today with day 18 of Defemember. So this is handmade stencil and notepad. If you are new to Defemember, you can check the description box below to find more information about it. The animal today is this flying fish, um, which was provided by Louisa Heinzel um, and Barbara from 49 Dragonflies for this challenge. And I've decided I just love it so much that I just want to use their image. I don't want to do anything um, to create my own flying fish today. So the other aspect of today is just simply that I'm having a super busy day. It's one of those busy, busy days of uh, December. So I want to really keep it very, very simple today. Um, so this is like the kind of video I feel like is good for people who, you know, they don't have, you know, maybe access to things to make very complex stencils. I just want a simple way to make a fun stencil um, and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to fussy cut this out. I'll talk a little bit about maybe a couple ways that I've created um, stencils and masks or whatever in the past. So one of my favorite ways is to laser print on acetate um, an image and then you can cut it out with your uh, with a razor knife. Um, I know there are some tools like scan and cuts and things that can do that kind of thing or crickets. I do not own those tools and I don't really see myself needing to own them. Um, the other way is to print an image on your printer just simply on a piece of paper then if you have a laminator you can laminate it and then you can cut the image out and you'll have a nice plasticized um, stencil so anyways what I'm going to do though is considerably easy today <laughs> so first thing that kind of caught my eye when I came into my studio today was all of these um, these are paint swatches so I don't know why I thought of them, I guess just because they're like green, like algae, like ocean, you know, so I was thinking about that. So I'm going to use them in a couple of ways. And then this is a piece of my cabbage dyed paper. Um, and I'm going to use that as the basis for the cover of my notebook. So the first thing I want to do is create my stencil. So what I'm going to do is actually just use a punch. And I think I like this punch. This is a Stampin' Up! punch and I like this particular shape. I think it will make a nice background for my my fish. Um, so what I want to do is just take a more simple colored page um, of this paint strip and I'm just going to go ahead and cut out some of these shapes here. like so. So there you go. We have a stencil essentially. Um, and I may use those for something as well to just kind of accent this. So then I want to use some distress oxide in mustard seed and I am going to just go over top of this cabbage dyed paper and just use this as a mask to create a bit of contrast, um, the color contrast of the yellow on this bluey kind of page. And this is a relatively like, you know, probably quite temporary type stencil, but it works. So if you are, you know, in a pinch and you need to stencil something and you don't own stencils and you don't have a lot of time like me um, to make a stencil, this is a quick way to go about it with an easy material and you could use, you know, any kind of um, cardstock paper or an old card, junk mail, like all of those realtor brochures that I get that are on that nice thick cardstock that the poor things pay for and I just end up recycling. <laughs> um, yeah. So the other thing you can do is, um, you know, you can get a little creative with your placement of your stencil. So, you know, you can see here, we've got this and that's just using it straight. So then maybe you can bring it right up in here. It's another benefit of having this little sort of temporary stencil is that you can place it wherever you want and you can use singular 
little images and it's really fun. You could obviously layer different colors. I'm just choosing to use these colors. Yeah, so that's pretty fun. Now I'm going to do one more line of the kind of normal picture or stencil rather. The normal placement without doing any movement. Okay. So we've just made a pretty funny piece of paper. That's also a nice page and a journal. Um, so I think what I want to do for the notebook, hmm, I did not do a bunch of planning, but I think I just want to essentially fold this in half, then um, fold it in half again. Now that would give me a nice kind of thicker notebook cover if I wanted a really thicker cover. But for this one, I feel like I probably want to keep it a little bit thin. So now that I've folded it, I'm going to probably just double check my fold again and make sure it's straight, first of all, because I don't think I took a lot of time to do that. Let's just make sure that's nice and straight. And I will just tear this in half. And I'm going to use this half. So what I want to do with these is I want to make the notebook pages out of them. And I want to make this like really simplistic. So just grabbing my glue stick here. So I'm just going to go down the back side of these with a bit of glue just to attach two of them together. just came to a bit of a different idea too as I'm sitting here thinking about these the shape of these okay. I'm going to actually use the hole that is in the paint swatches as a bit of a design idea I think this particular image of this flying fish, it's really quite nice. Um, it would look really nice printed multiple times and you could do like a really fun piece of ephemera with that. But again, this is my I'm in a hurry kind of day. <laughs> so I need to just work this project out. Okay. Now we have four of these and these are going to be the pages of my notebook. Then I have this at the front. So I'm going to take two and two and I want to stagger this one right there I think. And then this one right here. Okay, now I need a pencil and I want to just move up a little so you can see what I'm doing. So see I've staggered one here, the hole's here, the other hole's there. Make a little rough mark there. Now I will take both of these actually 
I'm going to just line these two up and then grab my hole punch, which is this, and I'm going to punch the hole. Here we go. So now we have lined up holes. So this over here. I'm going to use a little bit of glue. Um, on the back of here. Stick this down. Grab those two. I haven't glued the top one yet, which is okay. Um, maybe I should. Yeah, I probably should. Just to give it a little more strength. This one will get glued down here. And this one I did not glue. It's going to flip it up. Sorry if you can't see. Just give me one sec. There we go. Let me just move this a little over so that you can see. So that's been glued now and this has also been glued. Okay. Now I'm going to put a bit of glue on the front here. That other piece, we're going to just line those holes all up. Okay. I just have to put my pin back in my glue here. There we are. Now, what I'm going to do, um, I think, is just to keep this extra secure um, and have it not be scooching around at all, and also just for a decorative element, I want to do just a couple, like a little rectangle of stitching around here, and then I will be right back. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. I'm just going to get rid of this little string. Now I need a couple of eyelets that I'm going to put in those holes. So let me see if I can find a couple here from my eyelets. We have silver. I could also do white, but I think I think I feel a little partial to silver today. There we go. Oops, come back. Does anyone actually use the back of eyelets? <laughs> I rarely do. Okay. Come on. Kind of like mini, mini portholes <laughs> with our whole fish theme. Um, I just got to poke this in the middle here. So we have a little bit of something stuck in there, a little bit of extra metal. Let's get rid of that. So it's a little piece of sharp metal. Every now and then you get a slightly defective eyelet. Let's just make sure that's not sharp. It's not. Okay. All right, so now we have this. Then in here, we'll just go through real quick and give a fold to all the pages so that they come up okay. Okay, then come back down, fold this back. Now I need to just trim the bottom of the notebook at the same height as the paper, roughly. A little bit longer. Maybe not. Let's just go right on the line. Then, keep those scraps. I just want to go one more time here. 
to give it a bit of a I wish I could make like a a shaggy edge or something um let me think maybe a torn edge would be nice i know i keep taking more off of this <laughs> oh there we go that's what i'm after something a little less jagged you know a little more natural yeah that's better okay so now i'm going to take my little fish here which will be of course my focal point and I've just grabbed another piece of cabbage dyed paper. This is a book page. And I'm going to just glue it together to make it a little bit thicker. And so. And then I will glue my fish on here. I'm going to leave a little border. I'll just kind of give it a nice little press. There we go. And then decide how we want this to be. I think I want it to just be like right here. Um, but I also wanted to make use of those pieces of stencil that I cut out right here, these bits. Um, and then I was thinking, where is my stamp? Here it is. Um, I was thinking of making a few more of them. Maybe I'll also just use this one. so that uses that and then I need something more a little more dramatic in color maybe oh here I've got a scrap that might look good it's got some fun color on it you know I'm a fan of using up scraps and that's got some nice color and texture it's got some iridescent sparkly kind of gilding wax on it so those will be kind of fun so now what i'll do is just maybe move my glue book out of the way here this out of the way this out of the way okay so now let's just lay down a little bit of a collage and i kind of like that i'm able to use the stamp that i made you know this with because you know, it's, it's like you're going to notice, and these are kind of like a bit of a cog, right? They can sort of, yeah, I like that. They can sort of like fit together. I don't know if I even need another color other than that blue. What would the green look like here? Maybe one there, and maybe one over here. Yeah, let's do that, okay. So let's get this glued down. Um, I'll just start with these. It's going to use art glitter glue to glue these down. Before I glue the green ones, I think I'm going to just ink the edges a bit with this same ink. Just in a kind of a regular regular just to add a little more strength to the color because it's kind of boring it's a very dull paint chip <laughs> but it will be nice to just fill it in and also give it a little more texture okay let's get those all press and then we will glue the fish
Okay, then when I open up the booklet, I think what I will do is just use a few of these to just add a little visual interest. So we'll put one here. Just kind of carry the theme through the whole piece of work. And these are good because they're lighter in color than the other paint chips. It's also a great way to use up paint chips. I think sometimes, you know, we pick these things up or we end up getting like a whole packet of them from a thrift store. And then they become these things that end up getting into our stash that just like hang around forever. And we're like, what are we going to do with these things? So use it up. And then one more here. Don't worry too much about the extra glue. It's art glitter glue, so it looks a little shiny right now, but it's going to go away. I'm also just going to do this inking over them because it's me and I just like to have a little extra color. I'll do that one too, why not? Okay, so that's that, this is that. Then one more thing I wanted to do was where I have these eyelets here. I wanted to just take some of my hand spun yarn, thread it on through here. And I chose this nice brown, this is a merino tencel yarn. So it's got some nice shine to it. And it kind of reminds me of like the ropes that would be on a ship or something like that same kind of color. So I'll just, Tie this here, tie another knot. I wish I knew some boat knots. That would be kind of relevant, right? <laughs> and then you know what else you could we could do maybe that wouldn't be a boat knot necessarily, but it would be kind of a fun knot. Is we could pull this like this and tie it that way, but no, I don't think I will. You could. <laughs> but I think what I want to do is just cut a couple of lengths of this that are a bit long and then I want to just tie a couple knots. You could obviously tie beads. You could um, even take more punches of this same shape and you could tie one onto string or onto yarn and that would be fun. There we go. Then I think the last little step for this, just make sure that's all down these down okay is some kind of a word of something um let me just grab some word snippets because i like to live life on the edge and hope that i will find something here um that doesn't take forever but we don't know it might take forever um what's this one no. My word snippets are a little bit um random. Again, as if by magic, maybe. I'm gonna give myself just another moment here. Beautiful and rare. That's a good one. Let's do that. Beautiful and rare. Because, you know, how often have you ever seen a flying fish? Can you imagine how fun that would be? Just being in a boat and seeing a flying fish? I would love that. I hope that happens to me someday. I don't know where flying fish live. I haven't researched that yet. I'll have to. So I'm going to just stick it on a little bit of this book spine because it's rugged and fun. And I'm obsessed with book spine. I use it in so many things. Okay. Let's get it glued up here. And it's got kind of like a fishnet type feel to it. Just give it a little press down. 
All right, so there we go. We have our little notebook with our handmade stencil and our flying fish and a few more bits of interest and unexpected materials. I think what I would do now with this um, is just, you know, to keep it within my my style of wanting to be a little more vintagey is just um, come in and like hit it with some vintage photo ink around the edges um, until it's all inked up. And that would make me happier, I think. Um, but yeah, that's an easy way to just play with a stencil, right? You don't have to worry too much about if you have stencils and a laminator and all the cutting with the craft knife. Maybe that's a little bit hard for you. I know not everybody has like the dexterous hand to be able to do that. So punches can make things a little easy. And the fun thing about like stamps and punches and all the simple shapes is that you know they're pretty easy to translate together so if you create you know you think of how stamps and dies or stamps and punches can fit together this is a way to maybe add stencils to that whole um that whole game of like using everything together right so yeah that's fun and you could also do a little something on the back if you wanted to but i think i am good with this as is so thank you again for joining me for this day. I will be back tomorrow with day number 19 um, of this super fun Defemember. So have a great day and we'll talk very soon. Bye for now.